Christ destroyed our death. Rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again. As in baptism, Mary took on Christ. So in Christ. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not been revealed. But we know that when he appears, we shall be our king. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. 
Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Mary Waddell. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human <clears throat> loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort. In sorrow, hope. And in death, resurrection. This begins our family visitation, and we will have visitation. Things are a little different now, but we will have our family visitation. There may be others who come in later who wish to comfort you. And although we can't do the things that we normally would do at a homegoing celebration, God is still good. God is still on the throne. God has called his daughter home. And although our loss, our physical loss may be great, we know that in the sweet by and by, 
in the sweet by and by, what we celebrate today, the life of Mary Waddell, will go on for generations and generations. So I invite you during this time, as others come in, uh, for this family hour and this time of celebration.
my friends, we gather here today to celebrate, to celebrate the life of Mary Waddell. Celebrate and think about all of the joy that she brought to everyone that she came in contact with. So I know that our eyes may become full of tears and it's hard to say goodbye, but we're not saying goodbye. We're saying we'll see you. We'll see you in the sweet by and by. Our order of service today we will have a selection by Miss Nakia <clears throat> Alexander, Because He Lives, followed by our Old and New Testament lessons. And Reverend Rod Vegas Ingram will share those lessons with us today. Our prayer of comfort will be given by Bishop Terry L. Young. So we will follow the program in that order.
with pain. Everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. But then, my brothers and sisters, there is another time which the Lord speaks of in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of our Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them 
in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. God, our Father, and to his precious Son, Jesus, the Christ, the head of the great Christian church, to Pastor Yours and to Pastor Ingram, to the Wardell and Mitchell family, uh, our hearts, our prayers are with you. I was reading some of the posts because Marietta would post me, send me a text every every week saying that she listened to one of the teachings or messages. The last one I got was she was wishing me a happy birthday and wanted me to be good to myself. And uh, then she was, she sent me one she said, can you pray for Mo and Sandy? <laughs> she said, because I believe in you and I believe in the word. And I look forward to her, her text. I'm going to miss her text. We used to laugh as kids because I always called her Marietta. And she would always tell me, you're the only one in the family who can say my name right. <laughs> Everybody called them Maretta and Marta and they would murder her name. But we we had we had a time. We we grew up together. We spent many a times in that old blue house that Uncle Clyde built. So you know it was older than Methuselah. But we had fun there. We had fun growing. And Marietta was always the boss. She was always bossing us around and more didn't like it because he was the oldest. <laughs> but we let her have her way. Amen. So I, uh, I'm i grateful uh, for the time that I had with her, her life, her love, and her legacy. That's what I share. Hallelujah. As we prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Hmm. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. Once again, we come before you. We come, God, as empty vessels, knowing that we serve a God who's able to fill us back up. We come now, Lord, on behalf of this, your daughter, this mother, this grandmother, this great-grandmother, this sister, 
We come right now, God, asking you to do what we can't do. Lord, we're praying right now that you would comfort us. God, you said in your word that to be absent from the body, oh my, is to be present with the Lord. And so, God, we, we thank you for the time that you gave. Lord, we thank you for 60 years of memories. Lord, we thank you. We know right now, God, that earth has no sorrows. Yes. That heaven cannot heal. Yes. So God, we ask if you would just throw your loving arms around Vaughn. Throw your loving arms around Pam. Throw your loving arms around this family. Do God what only you can do. Comfort them. Give them peace, Lord. Speak to their minds. Speak to their hearts. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes. as we gather together, Lord, Lord, you said that you are life mm -hmm. and that you are the resurrection. Yes. And we recognize today that we're not here to say goodbye, but, but we come now to say goodnight. Yes. That we will see you again. Yes. Now, God, keep us yes. mindful of your will. Yes. Keep us mindful of your ways. Yes. And Lord, when all and everybody have walked away, remind her daughters, remind her grandchildren, remind yes. them, Lord, yes, Lord, that Lord, that you call her, that, that you are God who's never made a mistake. Yes. Give them peace in the midnight hour. Yes, God. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. For the life. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, thank you. Yes. for her legacy. Yes. But most of all, God, we thank you, thank you for her love. Yes. This is my prayer. My God. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. could your loved one have given the world than the caring that is so clearly written in the hearts of your whole family. So sorry for your loss, Robert Dillard and family. With sympathy to you and your family, there's an unbroken thread that is woven from love and it keeps standing always together. For nothing's as real as the moments we shared. They live on in our memories forever. A difficult, as difficult as this time is, may you find comfort in knowing that your loved one will always be with you. And the memories you shared will, will forever be a part of your life. You are in our prayers, prayers to Cardell family. The journey home. There's a path that leads to a turn in the road. And we each must travel there. Where the Father waits to take us home to the shelter of his care. Where happiness and peace and joy replace the tears and pain and our loved ones rest in the arms of God to sweetly live again. Praying God will hold you close and greatly ease your sorrow, heal your heart and strengthen you for every tomorrow. Love always, Mary Lou and family. Wishing you peace at this sad time and hoping you know you're not alone in your sorrow. Friends and loved ones are lifting you up in prayer now and in the days to come. Our hearts hurt with you in this sad time. Our prayers are for you, Chris indeed. With caring sympathy, no one who has been loved is ever lost. For memories live on forever in the heart. Caring about your sorrow and remembering you in prayer with sincere sympathy, you and our prayers love Renee and Doug. Mm
at this time, we ask you to join us in reading the obituary silently. And as we read Mary's obituary, let our hearts be touched by the life that she lived here on earth. But a new life, a new life has begun. So we invite you just for a minute or so to read the obituary. this time we'd like to invite the family and friends who would like to reflect upon the life of Mary and share with us at this time and the family has asked that you limit your remarks to two minutes please but at this time if anyone would like to speak on their reflections and memories of Mary at this time. You can either come to the front or if you want to stand at your seat, it's perfectly all right. I'd like to just tell you about a little bit about Mary, my uh, association with her. I talked to Mary Anna on the phone, sometimes three or four times during the week. And every time I talked to Mary, she would tell me, Katie, I want to get better so I can come and help you with the bulletin board. So I told her then, okay, that's your job. You have a job to do the bulletin board. But that's, that's what she talked about every time I called her. She just wanted to get back to the church so she could, you know, work like the guy that called her to do. But I miss Mary. I'm going to miss her a lot. When I first heard that Mary had passed, I dialed her number, and I just let the phone ring because I wanted to hear her voice. But I let it ring, ring, ring. And I found myself doing that another time during the day. Mary was my friend. I think she loved me, and I sure did love her. And Mary had, had gotten to the point that she loved to hear my brother Ronnie sing. And she said, Katie, will you please get me some of the uh, CDs? I said, yeah, I'd be glad to do that. And she would call me every once in a while when she said, did Ronnie make a new CD? I said, no, but when he makes one, I'll be glad to bring it to you. That's my relationship with Mary. I'm going to miss her because I love her. Thank you.
My name is Eddie Doors, and I am first lady of Colin Grove at Aunt Becky's Church. And I knew Mary. She was a quiet soul. Mm -hmm. She never bothered anyone. I knew I could look to my left and see her sitting there with her family, sometimes consoling her sister uh, and loving on her family. I could tell that she had much love for her family mm -hmm. and a special, special love for her grandkids. Mm -hmm. And she loved Colin Grove. She worked hard when she, before she got hurt. She was our, one of our ushers and she was always there. I love Mariana. She was so sweet and so kind. And I'm gonna miss seeing her and her sister sitting there on the left side of where I sit. I don't want to overlook anyone. You know, there's a time uh, pastors, whether they're new, whether they're old, whether it's their first appointment or their last appointment. Their congregations, their congregations make an impact on them. They make them grow as a preacher. They make them grow as a teacher. They make them grow as a counselor. They make them grow in love for the entire community. Mary was one of those persons who made me grow. I could be having maybe a, not the best Sunday morning that I could think of. But there was Mary. And I look and see her smiling face. And the confidence that she gave. And I don't want to do not want to preach her eulogy now, but I just want this family to know she loved her church, she loved her family, and I believe she loved me. I believe, I believe she loved me. And that strengthens me during this time. So, as the Bible says, let not your hearts be troubled. After another selection from Lakia, we'll have words of comfort and the eulogy today. free he 
washed He washed me white as snow And he made me whole He washed me Come from us. 
We are afflicted in every way. Yes, sir. But not crushed. <laughs> We're not perplexed. Mm -hmm. But not driven to despair. We can be persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes, sir. We can be struck down, but we're not destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Always, always carrying in the body, our bodies, the death of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, my friends, that the life of Jesus may be made visible mm -hmm. in our bodies. Yes, sir. Where Mary went, the life of Jesus was present. For while we live, we're always being given up to death for Jesus' sake. Mm -hmm. So that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. That's good news, y'all. Mm -hmm. That's good news. Yeah, so you. the death is in, at work in us, but life in mm -hmm. you. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner, our inner nature is being renewed yes. every day. For this slight momentary affliction mm -hmm. is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory mm -hmm. beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, mm -hmm. but at what cannot be seen. Yes, For what can be seen is temporary, yeah. but what cannot be seen is eternal. Will you pray with me? Father God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the life of Sister Mary Wydell. Lord, I ask that you take our cares and our concerns away from us during this time so that we may focus on your word. Your word that will help us tonight. Your word that will help us tomorrow. Your word that will help us in the sweet by and by. Mm -hmm. More of you and less of me. Mm -hmm. All of you and none of me. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of everyone's heart be pleasing and acceptable. For you are our strength and our redeemer. She's God's treasure. She's, she's God's treasure. Yes. She's God's treasure. Go back to that eighth verse that I just read. You see, we are afflicted in every way. But we're not crushed. We're not perplexed. We're not driven to despair. We're persecuted, but we're not forsaken. We're struck down, but we are not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be also made in our bodies. Mm -hmm. To this family, to this family, to the friends of the family, to my members of my congregation, to everyone from the postal service anywhere that people knew Mary Waddell. Mary has left us, the Mary that we knew, but that's okay. Mary has transitioned, and she's transitioned from this earthly home. Yes. Mm -hmm. She's gone to her mansion. Mm -hmm. God prepared this for her. And he told us in his word that I go before to prepare a room for you. He's prepared a room for Mary. Oh, it's, it's a sweet, y'all. It's a sweet. And she's there, and she's in his bosom. He went to prepare this place. 
I know it's tough on us. I know it's tough on us. It's going to be tough looking at where Mary used to sit. And I don't see Mary. But see, as we go back to the scripture, a little bit of us dies each day. A little bit dies each day. But the good thing about this is that she's still with us. She's still with us in spirit. I look, I mean, I see Mary, but I smile. Because I think of Mary, and I will be blessed by the things that Mary did yeah, yeah. for her pastor and her church. Mm -hmm. Her family, mm -hmm. she was always talking about her children, her daughters, her grandchildren. Mary loved her family so much. Mo, you know, Sandy, you know. Yeah. She took care of everyone. She was an unselfish person placing herself last you know it's like when we're on the sinking ship and everybody else is on the lifeboat but me but that's the way I want it to be because that's what God has placed in me his love for me is undying my love for you and Mary's love for us was undying but you see, that time came when what Mary had done here on earth, it was time. <clears throat> that time had run out. You know, Mary, her time with us, where she, we could see her, where we could touch her, that time had run out. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's okay. Because when I look at you, I think about Mary, this family. She grew up in this family. And she grew up, and she grew in her walk with the Lord by accepting Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. Mary liked to serve, which was indicative of her. Mary being an usher working with the United Methodist Women. She did all these things until her health made it so that she couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Though Mary couldn't do those things that she used to do, her love for the Lord <clears throat> was never diminished. You see, her love and her faith in the Lord comforted her during these physical challenges that Mary would have to go through. But I, but I know it was Mary's love and faith that carried her when she was not maybe having a particularly good day. Friends, Mary never lost her faith. Amen. She never lost her faith. Now, our scripture talks about having this treasure, having this treasure in clay jars. And if we go back to the time of the Apostle Paul and, 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 and those times, jars and vases were a way that people stored liquids and other treasures. Well, I want to use that metaphor today to tell you that Mary was a treasure in a jar. It became apparent to me with all that was going on in her life that she knew and believed the extraordinary power that was inside of her. This power that was inside of her belonged to God mm -hmm. and did not come from any other source. She knew, Mary knew she had afflictions. But she was not crushed. There may have been times when she may have been perplexed. But you see, she wasn't driven to despair and saying, oh, woe is me. There may have been times when she felt persecuted. But that 
did not destroy Mary. She knew that in her body, she always carried the death of Jesus. But by carrying that death, we, we, all of us, all of us saw the life that Jesus Christ brings in us and brought in Mary. She knew that death is always at work in us, my friends. It's always at work in us. But what is important to us today and to this family is that she knew life. She knew life was in Jesus. And because of her love and her faith in, in Jesus, friends, we should not be saddened. Family, we should not be saddened today. I'm not saying don't cry. I'm not saying don't grieve. But those of us who believe, we are believers. We know that Mary is with her Lord, that she loves so much, that she, that she knew because she carried this around in her. Mary knew. And she, she, she has the assurance that the one, the one who raised Jesus Christ up, and we all know, will raise her up with Christ also. See, that's, that's the good news. That's what gives us the comfort today. That's, the, that's, what, that's what gives us the fact that we may not be able to reach out and touch and hug and love up on Mary. We know that she is in God's bosom right now. See, that's temporary right there. That's temporary. But that's eternal. This is eternity. That we want to be up there with Mary. We want to be there. Family and friends, our bodies are wasting away every day. I know. Some days when I get up in the morning, I'm stretching it and I say, oh, okay, now that wasn't it yesterday. Yes, sir. <laughs> every day, every day now. You know. But when we have that right relationship, I'm talking about that right relationship with the Lord. Our inner nature and relationship with Him is being renewed day by day. Think about all the things that we go through every day. This is tough. This is a tough time. But God is renewing us each and every day <clears throat> so that we don't get tied down in today but look forward to tomorrow. We look behind and see yesterday. Yesterday's gone. We're here today. But he has given us a promise of life. A promise of eternal life. And that's what we have to look forward to every day. These momentary afflictions that we endure are preparing us for an eternity of glory beyond all measure. Because we look at what can be seen but at what cannot be seen. We're always wanting to look at what we can use our five senses for. Rather than look at what we can't see. It's called believing. Mary believed. And that's why the Lord in his wisdom, in his wisdom said, Mary's time to come home. He said, it's time to come home. You don't have to worry about your knee no more. You don't have to worry about your sugar no more. You don't have to worry about Momo saying to anybody anymore. I want you to come home and be with me. Christina, Siobhan, Lord said to your mama, come home. I'm going to take care of the girls now. You don't have to worry about that. You know, 
Don't, and, and don't you worry. Easier said than done. Because I've been there and, and knew my mama was in the casket. But let me tell you something. God had, gives us so much grace. He gives us so much grace that each and every day, that measure of grace that we receive, it takes away the sadness. It takes away the tears. It fills that empty place in the heart. And believe it or not, smiles come on our face because we think about mom and all the happiness and all the love she brought. She was a believer. She was a believer, and she believed in that. I give you that today. Oh, yes, we say as pastors and preachers that weeping may endure for a night and joy comes in the morning. But I'm here to tell you, there will be joy. Hmm. There will be joy in the morning. Believe. God sent his son. Yes, he did. They call him Jesus. He came to love, to heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon, your pardon, our pardon. And there's an empty grave to prove that our Savior lives. <laughs> if I could sing, I'd sing it. But because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Yeah, yeah. Can I say that one more time? Yeah. Because he lives, I can face, we can face yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Because he lives, all fear, you don't have to be afraid of anything, yeah. is gone. Because we all know yes, that he, he holds the future. Yeah, yeah. And life is worth the living yes. just yeah. because he lives. Yeah, yeah. You know, when we have home going services, it's a celebration. And as a pastor and as a preacher and, and teacher of the gospel, I would be, I would be in a bad place if I did not offer invitation to Christian discipleship. You see, this is worship. This is worship. This is worship. And we're worshiping God in a way that, that maybe some people don't understand. But those of us who believe in him and believe in life and life, eternal life, know that this is worship. So there may be someone within the sound of my voice today that God has placed in her heart or his heart that he wants you to be a part of this family. It's a family where everybody is kin folk. Everybody's name is the same. Maybe there's somebody today who wishes to give their doesn't matter 
It doesn't matter what you've done or what you have not done. But from this day forward, you say, Lord, I want to be your child. I want to follow you. I give my life to you. Maybe there's someone. give the benediction today. We have a service of commitment that we will do at this time. Listen. I will tell you all a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable ability and this mortal body must put on immortality. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, oh where, oh death is your victory. Where, oh death is your sting. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you have ordered this wonderful world and know all things in earth and in heaven. Give us such faith that by, that by day and by night at all times and in all places we may, without fear, commit ourselves and those dear to us to your never failing love in this life and the life to come. <coughs> Amen. Hear now what the scriptures say. Jesus said, very truly I tell you. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Almighty God, to your hands we commend your daughter Mary in sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen this body to its resting place. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors for their deeds will follow them. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for those we love but see no more. Receive 
into your arms your servant Mary and grant that increasing in knowledge and love of you she may go from strength to strength in service to your heavenly kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now I ask all of you to pray with me as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those of God's glory with rejoicing to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty power and authority for all time now and forevermore Thank you. 